you. Uh, no, you won't. Oh, losing my voice. <laughs> I've already preached once today, so. Uh, We're uh, doing uh, the book of Isaiah in the morning service. It's a wonderful uh, uh, description and uh, revelation of God's glory and power. But after we did Yong Jun's ordination service the other day, I felt I needed to write another message in 2 Timothy for you. So that's what we've done for today. Let's pray. Father, as we open this wonderful letter from Paul to Timothy, would you open our hearts and minds? We know this is from a man who is dying to a, a younger Christian, urging him to live well for you. To give, to live the, the, the life that you have given him in Christ. And Father, here we are so many years later, no, a people knowing new life through believing in Jesus. And you want to give us that life in much more fullness. That we would know more of its reality and power. That our faith would be seen and would be effective in the world. So today we believe you want to encourage us. You want to spur us on. You want to grow us and make us more mature in the faith. And so Father, we confess we're your family. We are your children. Lord, grow us and make us strong. And fill us with your love and joy and grace. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, the second letter of Timothy that we have here is the last recorded words we have from the Apostle Paul. It's a wonderful letter, it's encouraging and teaching us. And how to live faithful lives for Christ as a Christian. Shortly after Paul wrote these words, he was taken outside Rome and beheaded. It was the year 87, uh, 67. And the cruel Emperor Nero was in power in Rome. And he hated Christians. And was persecuting them. And there'd been a massive fire in Rome. And he blamed the Christians for that fire, using that as an excuse to persecute them. And so they were doing all manner of awful things to Christ's people. Even burning them as living torches. And the letter we saw that uh, Paul talked about Timothy's tears. Maybe it was when he was watching Paul being dragged off by the authorities. So Paul was being held in a dark, damp dungeon. All on his own. And awaiting his execution. And while Paul was facing his death, he wrote to Timothy about the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. 
。虽然保罗现在面对死亡，但是他对提摩太写这封信，他提出的事情就是要如何活出一个是按照基督耶稣里所应许的生命。Christianity is about experiencing new life in Christ Jesus. 基督徒整个最重要的事情是在基督里面经历一个那种新的生命。Now Paul was sure that when he died, he would be with God and have the incredible life he so often spoke of. 保罗深信，当他死以后回到神那里，享受他常常提到他这美好的生活。As a pastor, I have the incredible privilege of sitting with people as they are dying. 作为一个牧师，我有这样子的荣幸，能够陪伴一些人走他人生的最后一段路程。And in those last days and 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 hours, we're often imagining and thinking, what's it going to be like? What are you going to see tomorrow? What are you going to see this afternoon when you go to be with the Lord? And as I'm sitting there with these people, I'm actually feeling a bit envious of of what they're about to be in. 当我在陪这些人做走他最后一人生最后一段路程的时候，常常会提到说，想想看，如果今天下午去见了主，我的天将会什么样子？让我觉得很羡慕他们。But Paul also tells us that as believers, we have new life now. 但是保罗也告诉我们，我们现在是信主的，我们现在这边有新的生命在我们当中。Fully as it will be in eternity, but we do have it in part now. 但是，当我们这个新的身份证等到我们等到见到荣耀之后才会有的。但是，我们现在已经可以尝到一点这样新身份的感觉是什么 ？Paul said in his first letter to Timothy, one、uh, Timothy four eight, but physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. 保罗在提摩太前书有这样子提到：操练身体益处还少，唯独金钱，凡事都有益处，因今因有今生和来生的应许。Paul wrote his letter to Timothy, but he also wrote it for us that we would take seriously how we live this new life we've been given. 保罗这封信不只是写给提摩太的，是写给我们在座的每一个人，要我们好好的想，我们要怎么样过着金钱的生活。That we would experience all that God promises us. 我们会给大家经历到神给我们所有的应许。And the life to come, but also in this life here. 不只是我们现在今天生活，还有我们来生的，就等到我们见主面的时候的生活。In John's Gospel, we read, "Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have seen." 约翰福音也这样子提到，认识你独一的真神，并且认识你所差来的耶稣基督。就是，这就是永生。We enter into an extraordinary relationship and an extraordinary nearness to God that He now lives with us and in us. 我们进入一个与神非常不平凡的关系，我们能与神亲近，他与我们同住，他住在我们里面。We know God. 但是我们能够认识这位神。We really know God. 我们真的认识这位神。Like we know our best friend only better. 就像我们认识我们最好的朋友，还是比那个认识还更深的一种一层的认识。Everything in our lives, every situation, every need, every joy is affected by all that He is in us. 在我们生命中每一件事情、每一个的光景、每一个需要、每一个喜乐，因着他与我们同在。His love, His power, His truth, His wisdom. His grace, His mercy, and His peace. He will give us His love, His power, His truth, His wisdom, His mercy, and His peace. And His love, His power, His truth, His wisdom, His mercy, and His peace. He will give us His love, His power, His truth, His wisdom, His mercy, and His peace. He will give us His love, His power, His truth, His wisdom, His mercy, and His peace. He will give us His love, His power, His truth, His wisdom, His mercy, and His peace. He will give us His love, His power, His truth, His wisdom, His mercy. 神对不配所，神对不配的人所赐的一个恩赐。Grace is God's blessings, completely undeserved. 这个恩惠就是神的给我们的一个祝福，是我们完全没办法、不值、不不配得到的。Grace is forgiveness. 其实这个恩惠就是一个最最的权柄。Grace gives us new life. 这个恩惠给我们新的生命。Mercy is the opposite of grace. 那怜悯是跟这恩典是完全不同的一一个词。Mercy is God withholding what we deserve. The 这个怜悯就是神不给我们我们应当得的东西。We don't deserve new life. 
We deserve hell, not heaven. We reconciliation with God. Restored to harmony and fullness of fellowship with Him. Life in all its fullness. Peace, we think of peace as the absence of war, but for the Jewish people, peace meant the presence of all we need and all its richness in God. So Paul writes the promise of life. God promises it to us as we give our lives to Jesus. Now the belief today is that success and happiness are found in seeking your own will, your own pleasures and your own gains. But the Bible says clearly and strongly that life and fulfillment are found only in seeking God and His will. Verse 2 it says it is from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. If you don't know and experience this fullness of life, He must be Lord. Having full authority in your life. Paul then moves on practical things. Firstly, Paul says to Timothy, I constantly remember you in my prayers. What a life-giving gift that is. Today, I was sharing in the morning congregation afterwards, God's blessed me with a number of things lately, and these ladies came to me and said, we pray for you every day, Pastor. I've just recently been in Vancouver at Regent College. All on my own, a little Kiwi boy. And yet some lovely Canadians took me under their wing and they so blessed me instead of they didn't let me stay at the residence I was. They took me to their home. They drove me around. They took me to restaurants. They, it was amazing. And people back here were praying that I'd have a really special time and be refreshed. And I was. There's a story I love to tell of when I was about two or three years old. I, I know I was out on the playground at the campsite my parents started, and two ladies saw me. They didn't know me. They knew who I was, but they didn't know me. And God prompted them to pray for me every day. They never saw me for 30 years. Although they would follow little snippets of news when I was a bit older in the Baptist newspaper. And then over 30 years later, I was at Christchurch being ordained as a Baptist minister. And these two ladies came up to me and said, Peter, you don't know us, but we've been praying for you every day since you were a little wee boy. Peter, Peter, 
And we all need people who will commit themselves to praying for us. I hope you all pray for Pastor Jack. He needs lots and lots and lots of prayer. But we all do. And we need to be prayers. Are the people that God has put on your heart that He would have you pray for? They don't have to be Christian people. They might be people who are not yet Christians that God places on your heart that He wants you to plead with them for. When we dedicate babies in the morning service, we often ask, is there anyone here that God is prompting you to remember this little child every day of their life? One of our missionaries, Susie, one day one of the elderly ladies in the church saw her many, many years ago and didn't know her. And that lady has prayed for Susie every day and they've become best friends. When we pray like this, it imparts God's life and blessings into other people. Paul also speaks of Timothy's sincere faith. He celebrates that Timothy came to faith in God because of the faith of his grandmother and his mother. They influenced Timothy in such a way that he came to faith in God to know him and trust him. I'm absolutely certain that these godly parents and grandparents were praying for him. There is no more loving thing that you can do than to pray for someone with God's passion and heart. But at the end of the day, it wasn't the grandmother's faith or the mother's faith, but it was Timothy's faith that was important. And many of you are first generation Christians. You, you haven't got a Christian parent or a Christian grandparent. I have Christian parents, Christian great parents, Christian great great grandparents, Christian great 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 great. In fact, one of my forebears was the first Baptist martyr. So it goes back a long way, back in the 1500s. <laughs> But I still had to have a faith myself. I didn't want to become a Christian. I didn't want someone telling me what to do. I'm scrappy, rebellious. I like to do my own thing. I like to be in control. But God kept impressing and wrestling with me, and I knew that I was going to lose. I had to surrender my will to God. And I remember going to my mother one day and saying, I give in, I'm going to become a Christian. And I can remember my baptism, and everybody's baptism was the same. You can't copy anyone's baptism. Everyone's experience of God and baptism is different. We all get wet. And we all witness to, to the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But I remember coming up out of the water making this funny noise. 
我记得我从睡前的时候，我做了一个很怪的声音。But I was quite embarrassed. 我就很不，我就好像不好意思。But it was the noise of a little kid giggling. 其实一个小朋友在那边笑。God made me into a new child. Yes. 那时候，神把我变成他的新的孩子。And I've never forgotten that. 我从来没有忘记这样的事情。And so Paul says, then, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. So, 这边保罗讲说，为此我提醒你，使你将上帝借我所按给你的恩赐，再如火挑旺起来。Paul saying this because of this promise of life that comes through faith. 保罗说到这里是因为你凭着信心得到这样子的新的生命的应许。But we have to keep it alive. We have to keep it alive. 我们必须要保持这样的信心，火热的信心。I love fires. 我很喜欢看火。I love the warmth of the fires. 我很喜欢那个火炉，壁炉上给那个出来的那个热气。I love watching the flames and hearing the wood spit and crackle. 我很喜欢听到在火炉前面听那个火，那个柴火那边被烧的那种发出来的响声。At our family home in Dunedin, we have a set of bellows beside the fire. 在我丹尼丁的老家里面，我在客厅里面，我们有好几个烘箱。If you pump the air gently, or or forcefully, you you can make the embers burst into flame. 看你怎么样子用这个风箱，可能会使这个火火很快的燃起来。As believers in Christ Jesus, as those who have faith in Him, we have special gifts of life given to us. 我们身上有一个成为基督徒的神的子民，神给我们的特别的恩赐。The times they burn and glow brightly. 就是让我们这些能够慢慢调旺起来，我们心中这样子的火。Warming and touching others in a special and powerful manner. 在利用这样子的热气，这样子的暖流，在影响周围的人。At times we neglect them. 有时候我们常常忘记这样子的事情。Or we take for granted the life that Christ has given us. 我们好像不在意那个神给我们这样的新的生活。And it grows dim and dull. 这个火就慢慢熄灭下去。Paul says, "I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God." So Paul, this is here, 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 That power that gives us confidence and authority and influence and stamina and the ability to make a difference for good in the world. These are the power that comes from God. 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 We already have that power, but it only works as you step out in faith and use it and apply it. 我们新主人已经有那样子的能力，但是我们必须要踏出那信心的第一步，我们才能够去享有，才能用到这样子的能力。This is part of our flaming it as we trust in the Lord to provide for us all our need to fulfill His life. 生命中最重要的事情是我们要信靠神，能供给你一切所需、一切所需要的，完成他在生命中要完成的应许。And by His Spirit, as part of this new life, He gives us love. 借着他的圣灵，他给我们爱。His love, 他自己的爱 the ability to be self-giving, 自我牺牲的爱 to live a life that is generous to others, 过一个对人有宽厚大方的生活 and by His Spirit, God gives us self-discipline, 借着圣灵，他也给我们了自律 self-control, 自己的节制 the ability to stay true to His will, 能够站立的稳 without wavering, 忠心持守 but on their own, power by itself can be devastating and destructive. 但是在我们自己，只有刚强会一件非常危险的事情，可能是具有破坏力的。Needs influence and control, love and self-discipline. 但是必须要有爱跟自律在里面。Love can be all sentimental and wishy-washy without power and self-discipline. 如果我们只有爱，没有刚强跟自律的话，可能会太性感、柔弱而失去了功效。And self-discipline on its own can be merely intellectual and academic without power and love. 如果你有了自律，但是没有爱和刚强的话，则变成一些在理论上做的事情，理论上的一些事，人行不出来。The best way to fan them into flame and have them burning well is to use them 
to use them with God. 神赐给我们，我们生命中一切所需要的，这就是他的刚强，他的爱，他的自律。And to know that you need them, that life in your own strength is not enough, that it's weak and ineffectual. 这样的，我们如果说我们需要知道我们需要神这样的能力，不然的话，我们生命的时候会非常脆弱的。When I went to Baptist College to train for the ministry， 当我进到那个新教的神学院来变成牧师，上课的时候 ，I wasn't your typical Baptist student， 我不是一般这样子的进教会的学生学生。I didn't enjoy public speaking or、uh, art language kind of thing. I was more a science person. 我不太能够能够在大众前面那样讲话，我不会不会不太会写文章。So when I had to go to sermon classes, I went with fear and trembling. 当我看到这个讲道的课的时候，我非常的害怕。I still do it with fear and trembling. 我现在现在每次是怎么讲都很害怕。But my contemporaries who went to college, they were clever. They were clever. My the, my other college mates, yeah. 我所有的同学其他都非常的聪明，非常的厉害。And they could just get up and speak so easily, and they were they were so clever. 他们就起来就可以这样讲到，就可以讲话，不必做什么准备，他好像都很聪明。I would listen to them speak, and I think, oh no, they're so good. 我听他们讲说，哇，他们讲的那么好。And then I would get up and speak, and of course we were being videoed. They would examine us, and they said, you're so boring. 但是，我那时候说都是会被录下来的，所以他们看听到我在讲话说，你的讲话真的很无聊。And it's true, I was. 我真的是以前讲到真的很无聊。And I still am sometimes. 我有时候讲到可能会非常的哭，枯燥。I can still put some of you to sleep. 可能有些让你们就像打瞌睡。All those who didn't laugh are still asleep. 就像下面在在打瞌睡，是不是 ？But what I've found is over the 30 years of ministry or 35, I'm still doing ministry, and all those clever ones are not. 发现在三十五年之后，我还在这样子。继续为做服侍做牧师，那其他比较聪明的，好像都不想再做牧师了。Those who could rely on their natural ability was not enough. 如果我们不能靠我们自己天生的聪明智慧。And once like me, who don't have the natural ability, and every day I have to go help. 像这个没有像天天生的支付的时候，我们每天就要向神来取。And then I have to say it again, help. 每天跟神说，我需要你的帮助。Because I know that unless God enables me, I am in lots of trouble. 我知道如果神没有来帮助我的话，其实我也很大的麻烦。And so are the people who have to listen to me. 还有我听我讲到的也是一样。And so Paul knew that his strength was found in weakness. 所以保罗相信我们的刚强是从我们软弱中得到的。And this new life that Jesus gives us is only. Really powerful in our lives as we recognize that we need it. 我们跟我们这样子，我们能够过这样子很好、有能力的新生命，是当我们知道我们需要神的帮助的时候，我们才能享有这样子新的生命。Otherwise, we take it for granted, and it doesn't really work. 我们知道这个是我们应该当有的事情，所以说可能就没有办法有好这样子新的生活。And so Paul writes in Second Corinthians 12 verse 9. 保罗在第二哥林多后书第九章这样子。But he said to me, "My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties." For when I am weak, then I am strong. 哥林多后书第十二章第九节这样讲到，他对我说：“我的恩典够你用的，因为我的能力在人软弱上显得完全，所以我更喜欢夸我自己的软弱，好叫基督的能力庇护我。我为基督的缘故，就以软弱、凌辱、极难、逼迫、困苦。”为何喜乐的？因为我什么时候软弱，什么时候就刚强了。By faith, trust God to live His life in and through you. 借着信靠神，让他借由你活出他的样式，让圣灵在你身上动工。Allow and expect the Holy Spirit to be at work in you. 
，在你生活中刚强壮胆，为神走出去。那周围的人从你身上看到神的刚强。And go out and be confident and bold for God in your life. 让你很很勇敢的走出去面对群众。Allow God's power to be bold through you. 让神的能力能够充满你。Go out and love people and draw on God's love that is in you. 让你周围的人能够从里面支取到神的爱。And powerfully bless others with it. 让你成为。祝福四周人，是你四周围人的管道。Go out and live to the full with self-discipline and godly control, believing God for His victory in your life. 还有借着神赐给你的自律，过一个丰盛又得胜的生活。They are gifts from God that must be unwrapped and used. They are gifts God gives us to give us life. 这些是神给我们生命中的礼物，我们要接受这样礼物，打开来用。And as you do these things, you will discover the joy and the experience of living fullness of life that God promises to you. 当你这样子做之后，你会发现神应许你那丰盛生命的喜悦。May you know more and more of this life and this wonderful fullness and abundance. 让你能每一天能够更认识这样子丰盛的生命里面的丰盛。谢谢大家。Thank you.